Hey kids, it's Papa. You ready to explore the Bible? All right, take your Bibles and turn with me to Judges chapter six. Get your Bibles. You, you really just need to have your Bible open and ready every time you have devotions, okay? Good, do that. All right, Judges chapter six, and we're gonna jump down to chapter 11. Now, what happened before this was that once again, Israel did evil uh, in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord sent Midian back in. Midian was a nomadic nation. In other words, they lived in tents and they, they came and, and went, but this time they came in and they built garrisons. Uh, they were uh, fortresses, strong places that they uh, put in the mountains. And uh, with these garrisons, um, they would have army people there. But also Midian, because they moved and they had their flocks and their herds and their camels and their cows and, and uh, their tents, they came and basically moved into Israel. And when a crop was ripe, they would just take it all. And when, uh, you know, the olive trees, the olives were getting good and juicy, they would just take them all. And, and they were taking everything away from Israel. And the Bible says they were, they were like locusts. There were so many of them. And, uh, and, and so finally they cried out to the Lord and uh, we see what happened in verse 11. Notice it says, and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, pertaining unto Joash the Abarazite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. Okay, now you don't thresh wheat uh, in an enclosed area. Normally you would thresh wheat out in the open. Uh, up on a hilltop or someplace, because what you want to do is you get the, the cattle walking on the wheat and you stomp on the wheat. And what that does is it breaks off the chaff from the seed. And then you, you, you would scoop all of that up in shovels and you throw it up into the wind and the wind blows the chaff away. The chaff is the the shell that is around the meat. And it's a kind of like stuff that you don't want to get between your teeth. Um, and it would blow the chaff away and everything that fell down would be the good wheat. And so you wanted to do that up where there was wind. But wine presses and olive presses were normally down in an enclosed area so the wind would not blow stuff into it. And uh, why was he doing it there? Because if he did it up where it could be seen, the Midianites would come and take it all away from him. So he was being kind of cowardly there. Um, and, and so in verse 12, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon's looking around, who are you talking to? Uh, because he, here he was calling Gideon courageous, a mighty man of valor, uh, a man of a, a great military man. And apparently Gideon had not done any of that. He was the son of the the big guy and and uh, you know he hadn't done any of that he thought who is this guy talking to uh, and um, <clears throat> but you see the thing is um, God doesn't look at what we are God looks at what we are going to become he sees our potential and he knows the strengths that he has put into us and he knows what he can do with those if we will simply give those to him and let him use them, okay? Now, the problem is that Gideon was a coward. Gideon was afraid, and yet God wants him to do something that takes a tremendous amount of courage. And uh, so Gideon immediately starts throwing up you know, excuses. Notice in verse 13, and Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, then why has all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us, told of us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Okay, he's, he's not answering the angel. He is accusing the angel. Uh, in verse 4, And the Lord said unto him, uh, said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites, have not I sent thee? And Gideon's saying, what? Me? Might? Pfft, you got the wrong man. Um, notice verse 15. And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my father is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And Manasseh wasn't much of a tribe. <laughs> 
Uh, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Here's the thing. If God is with us, we can do anything. Anything that we ought to do, if, we, if God is with us and we rely on his strength, we can do anything that we need to do. Okay, And I want you to remember that. Uh, because with God, we can do anything. Without God, not so much. But with God, we can do anything that we ought to do. And so, <clears throat> you know, surely he said, I'm going to be with you. Verse 17, and he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. He said, eh, I not believe you're even really here. Uh, and uh, verse 18, depart not hence, I pray thee, till I come to thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee. And so he went and he, he uh, made, a, made a sacrifice. Uh, he, uh, you know, he butchered a, a, a goat and uh, made the broth and, and uh, he put unleavened, clay, uh, unleavened bread cakes on a, on a rock and he poured out the broth. And, and, and so he, he did this whole sacrifice thing. Uh, and notice verse 21, the angel of the Lord put forth the end of his staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there arose fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now he was saying, okay, you want a miracle? Okay, fine. Boom. There's a miracle. Fire comes up and just consumes everything. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Gideon perceived that it was an angel of the Lord, verse 22, and said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not. I love that about God. Thou shalt not die. But Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and he called it Jehovah Shalom unto this day. And it is yet in Ophrah, Oprah of the Abenazites. Now, we're going to leave it right there for today because our time is gone. But what you need to see here is that God understands when we are fearful. He really does. He knows that we are only dust. And, uh, and, and so he understands and he'll be patient with us. Now we just have to be careful not to argue too much with him. <laughs> um, and, and so um, today, just remember that with God, we can do anything that we ought to do. Without God, not so much. But with God, we can do anything that we ought to do. And Gideon was going to learn this. He hadn't learned it yet, but he would. So, in any case, that's it for today. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.